Section 8 Living Organisms in the Environment Living organisms play a crucial role in the environment by interacting with each other and with their surroundings. They form complex ecosystems that sustain life and contribute to the overall balance of nature. In this section, we will explore the various aspects of living organisms in the environment, including their relationships, adaptations, and ecological significance. 1. Interactions among living organisms Living organisms interact with each other in a myriad of ways. These interactions can be categorized into different types, such as predation, competition, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Predation involves one organism hunting and consuming another for food, while competition arises when organisms vie for limited resources like food, water, or territory. Mutualism describes a mutually beneficial relationship between two species, commensalism involves one species benefiting while the other remains unaffected, and parasitism entails one organism benefiting at the expense of another. 2. Adaptations of Living Organisms Living organisms have evolved a wide range of adaptations that enable them to survive and thrive in their specific environments. These adaptations can be structural, behavioral, or physiological. Structural adaptations refer to physical characteristics that enhance an organism's ability to survive, such as camouflage, protective shells, or specialized body parts. Behavioral adaptations involve actions or behaviors that help organisms meet their basic needs, such as migration, hibernation, or forming social groups. Physiological adaptations are internal mechanisms that allow organisms to cope with environmental conditions, such as temperature regulation or efficient water use. 3. Ecological Significance Living organisms play vital roles in maintaining the balance and functioning of ecosystems. They act as producers, consumers, and decomposers, contributing to the flow of energy and cycling of nutrients. Producers, such as plants and algae, convert sunlight into chemical energy through photosynthesis, forming the basis of the food chain. Consumers, including herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, obtain energy by consuming other organisms. Decomposers, like bacteria and fungi, break down organic matter and recycle nutrients back into the environment. This interconnected web of interactions ensures the stability and sustainability of ecosystems. Understanding the dynamics of living organisms in the environment is crucial for addressing ecological issues, such as habitat loss, species extinction, and climate change. By studying their relationships, adaptations, and ecological significance, we can gain insights into the delicate balance of nature and work towards preserving and conserving our planet's biodiversity. 1.1 Grouping Living Organisms in a Named Habitat Based on Observed Similarities and Differences In the realm of studying living organisms in their habitats, it is essential to categorize and group them based on their observed similarities and differences. By doing so, we can gain a deeper understanding of the diverse array of organisms within a specific habitat and explore their unique characteristics and interactions. This grouping process allows scientists to identify patterns, make comparisons, and draw insights into the ecological dynamics of the habitat. When observing a named habitat, such as a forest, grassland, or coral reef, researchers carefully examine the organisms present within it. They take note of various traits, including physical appearances, behaviors, ecological roles, and genetic relationships. These observed similarities and differences serve as the basis for grouping the organisms into distinct categories or taxa. Taxonomic classification systems, such as the Linnaean system, provide a framework for organizing living organisms into hierarchical groups based on shared characteristics. These groups range from broad categories like kingdoms and phyla to more specific classifications like classes, orders, families, genera, and species. Each level of classification signifies an increasing level of similarity among the organisms within that group. By grouping organisms in a habitat, scientists can discern commonalities and variations among species. For instance, in a forest habitat, they might identify different groups such as trees, shrubs, herbaceous plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and microorganisms. 
Within each group, further divisions can be made based on additional traits or characteristics. This grouping process facilitates scientific research and understanding by allowing researchers to focus on specific subsets of organisms and study their particular adaptations, behaviors, and ecological roles. It also aids in identifying potential keystone species, which have a significant impact on the overall health and functioning of the habitat. By recognizing the similarities and differences among organisms in a named habitat, scientists can unravel the complex web of interactions and dependencies that contribute to the habitat's overall biodiversity and ecological stability. Living organisms in various habitats, grouping based on similarities and differences. Living organisms inhabit a wide array of habitats, which are specific environments where they reside and engage in interactions with other organisms and their surroundings. Habitats encompass diverse ecosystems such as forests, deserts, grasslands, oceans, and numerous others. To gain a comprehensive understanding of these habitats, it is crucial to group organisms based on their observed similarities and differences. This grouping process aids in categorizing and studying organisms within their respective habitats, allowing for a more nuanced analysis of their characteristics and ecological dynamics. Each habitat presents unique conditions, including temperature, precipitation, soil composition, and availability of resources. Organisms within these habitats have adapted to thrive in these specific environments, acquiring distinct traits that enable them to survive, reproduce, and fulfill their ecological roles effectively. By grouping organisms based on similarities and differences, scientists can uncover patterns and discern the adaptations that contribute to their success within a particular habitat. For example, in a forest habitat, organisms can be grouped into different categories such as trees, understory plants, mammals, birds, insects, and microorganisms. Trees, as dominant organisms, form the canopy layer and provide shade, while understory plants thrive in the lower levels where sunlight is limited. Mammals, birds, insects, and microorganisms each occupy unique niches within the forest ecosystem, contributing to the overall biodiversity and functioning of the habitat. Grouping organisms based on similarities and differences facilitates the study of their ecological roles, interactions, and dependencies within a specific habitat. It allows scientists to focus their research on particular groups of organisms, uncovering their specific adaptations and behaviors. By identifying similarities and differences among organisms, researchers can also gain insights into the evolutionary relationships and genetic connections that exist within a habitat. Understanding the grouping of organisms in habitats is fundamental to conservation efforts and the preservation of biodiversity. By recognizing the distinct groups within a habitat, scientists can assess the health of an ecosystem, identify threatened or endangered species, and implement targeted conservation strategies. Furthermore, this knowledge aids in recognizing the potential impacts of habitat loss, climate change, and human activities on the delicate balance of organisms within their respective habitats. In conclusion, the grouping of organisms based on similarities and differences within habitats provides a framework for studying and comprehending the diverse array of life forms in various environments. By examining their characteristics, adaptations, and ecological relationships, scientists can unravel the intricacies of habitats and work towards their preservation and sustainable management. Grouping organisms in a forest habitat, exploring similarities and differences. Consider the fascinating realm of a forest habitat, where an assortment of diverse organisms coexist and interact. By closely examining this habitat, we can observe distinct groups of organisms, each possessing unique characteristics. By categorizing them based on their similarities, we gain valuable insights into their roles and adaptations within the forest ecosystem. In a forest habitat, several groups of organisms stand out, including trees, shrubs, herbaceous plants, insects, birds, mammals, and fungi. Let's delve into the characteristics that define these groups and foster their classification. 1. Trees The towering giants of the forest, trees possess notable features that distinguish them from other organisms. They exhibit a remarkable height, with sturdy trunks and branches that enable them to reach sunlight. 
Trees have deep roots that anchor them in the soil and absorb water and nutrients. Their woody structure provides strength and durability, ensuring their longevity in the forest ecosystem. 2. Shrubs In contrast to the lofty trees, shrubs are shorter and characterized by their multiple stems. While they may not reach the impressive heights of trees, shrubs play a crucial role in the understory layer of the forest, providing shelter and food sources for various organisms. Their compact and bushy forms allow them to adapt to limited sunlight and thrive in diverse forest conditions. 3. Herbaceous plants Herbaceous plants comprise a group of non-woody plants that typically possess soft stems. They exhibit a remarkable variety in size, shape, and reproductive strategies. Herbaceous plants play a crucial role in the forest ecosystem, filling niches both on the forest floor and in the understory. Their foliage provides vital resources for herbivores and serves as important contributors to the overall biodiversity. 4. Insects Insects, with their intricate and diverse forms, represent a highly abundant group within the forest habitat. They possess six legs, wings, and a segmented body structure. Insects fulfill essential roles as pollinators, decomposers, and as a food source for numerous organisms within the forest ecosystem. Their remarkable adaptability and reproductive strategies contribute to their ecological success. 5. Birds Birds, warm-blooded vertebrates, grace the forest habitat with their aerial presence. They boast remarkable adaptations for flight including feathers and wings. Birds play vital roles in pollination, seed dispersal, and insect control. Their melodious songs and diverse behaviors add to the enchantment of the forest soundscape. 6. Mammals Mammals, a group of animals highly familiar to us, exhibit distinguishing characteristics within the forest habitat. They possess fur or hair that helps regulate their body temperature and provides protection. Mammals are unique in that they give birth to live young, which they nourish through lactation. Their diverse dietary preferences and ecological roles make them integral components of forest ecosystems. 7. Fungi Fungi, often inconspicuous and non-green organisms, thrive within the forest habitat. They play a critical role in nutrient cycling and decomposition. Unlike plants, Fungi lack chlorophyll and are unable to perform photosynthesis. Instead, they absorb nutrients from their surroundings, breaking down organic matter and contributing to the forest's nutrient-rich soil. By grouping organisms in a forest habitat based on their shared characteristics, we gain a deeper understanding of their adaptations and ecological functions. This knowledge enhances our appreciation for the intricate web of relationships that sustain the forest ecosystem. Understanding the various groups within a habitat allows us to recognize the importance of each organism's role in maintaining the balance and resilience of the forest. 1.2. Taxonomic classification of organisms, grouping based on physical similarities. In the study of living organisms, taxonomic classification provides a systematic approach to categorizing and organizing them into different groups based on their physical similarities. By examining their shared characteristics, scientists can classify organisms into taxonomic groups, which helps in understanding their evolutionary relationships and providing a framework for studying biodiversity. Taxonomic classification follows a hierarchical system, with progressively narrower categories representing increasing levels of similarity. The Linnaean system, established by Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century, is widely used for this purpose. Let's explore how organisms are classified into taxonomic groups based on their physical similarities. 1. Kingdom The highest taxonomic category is the kingdom, which represents the broadest classification of organisms. There are five kingdoms recognized in the Linnaean system, Monera, Prokaryotes, Protista, Unicellular Eukaryotes, Fungi, Multicellular Fungi, Plantae, Multicellular Plants, and Animalia multicellular animals. 2. Phylum. Below the kingdom level, organisms are further classified into phyla. Phyla represent major groups of organisms that share certain anatomical and developmental characteristics. For example, in the animal kingdom, 
Some prominent phyla include chordata, vertebrates, arthropoda, arthropods, and mollusca, mollusks. 3. Class. Within each phylum, organisms are classified into classes based on additional shared physical characteristics. Classes represent smaller groups within a phylum that possess distinct anatomical, physiological, or behavioral traits. For instance, in the class Mammalia, mammals, organisms are distinguished by characteristics such as mammary glands, hair or fur, and the ability to nurse their young. 4. Order. Orders represent further subdivisions within classes and group organisms based on similarities in anatomy and behavior. Orders often reflect more specific shared traits among organisms. For example, within the class Mammalia, the order Carnivora encompasses mammals with specialized teeth and adaptations for a carnivorous diet, such as cats, dogs, and bears. 5. Family Families represent narrower groups within orders, consisting of organisms that share even closer physical similarities. Families often share similar anatomical features, reproductive strategies, or ecological roles. As an example, within the order Carnivora, the family Felidae includes various species of cats, which possess similar characteristics such as retractable claws and a carnivorous diet. 6. Genus Genus represents a more specific taxonomic category within a family. It groups together closely related species that share significant similarities in their physical attributes. For instance, within the family Felidae, the genus Panthera includes species such as lions, tigers, and leopards, which exhibit shared characteristics like a muscular build and predatory behavior. 7. Species Species is the most specific taxonomic category, representing a group of individuals that share the highest level of physical similarity and can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. The species name consists of two parts, the genus name followed by the species epithet. For example, Panthera lea refers to the species of lions, while Panthera tigris represents the species of tigers. By classifying organisms into taxonomic groups based on their physical similarities, scientists can identify evolutionary relationships and gain insights into the diversity of life forms. This systematic approach allows for easier organization and study of organisms, providing a foundation for understanding biodiversity, ecological roles, and evolutionary history. Taxonomy organizing diversity through classification. To comprehensively grasp the vast array of living organisms and establish a systematic framework for studying them, scientists have devised a system known as taxonomy. This system enables the classification of organisms into various groups based on their physical similarities and evolutionary relationships. By categorizing organisms hierarchically, from broad to specific, Taxonomy provides a fundamental tool for understanding and organizing the diversity of life on Earth. 1. Domain At the highest level of taxonomic classification, organisms are categorized into three domains, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. This classification is based on differences in cell structure, biochemistry, and genetic composition. Archaea and bacteria consist of prokaryotic organisms while eukarya comprises organisms with eukaryotic cells. 2. Kingdom Below the domain level, organisms are further classified into kingdoms. There are currently five recognized kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Each kingdom represents a distinct group of organisms that share fundamental characteristics and traits. 3. Phylum Within each kingdom, organisms are organized into phyla. Phyla represent major groups that encompass organisms with similar body plans, developmental patterns, and shared characteristics. For example, in the animal kingdom, the phylum chordata includes organisms possessing a notochord and a dorsal nerve cord, such as mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. 4. Class Within each phylum, organisms are further classified into classes. Classes group together organisms with more specific shared characteristics, such as anatomical features, physiological functions, or behavioral patterns. For instance, in the class Mammalia, 
organisms share common traits like mammary glands, hair or fur, and the ability to nurse their young with milk. 5. Order. Orders represent additional subdivisions within classes and group organisms based on more specific shared characteristics. Orders often reflect similarities in anatomy, behavior, or ecological roles. For example, within the class Mammalia, the order Carnivora includes organisms with specialized teeth and adaptations for a carnivorous diet, such as cats, dogs, and bears. 6. Family. Families represent narrower taxonomic groups within orders. They comprise organisms that share even closer physical similarities, including common anatomical features, reproductive strategies, or ecological functions. For example, within the order Carnivora, the family Felidae encompasses various species of cats, which share traits like retractable claws and a carnivorous diet. 7. Genus Genus is a more specific taxonomic category within a family. It groups together closely related species that share significant similarities in their physical attributes, genetic makeup, and evolutionary history. For instance, within the family Felidae, the genus Panthera includes species such as lions, tigers, and leopards, which exhibit shared characteristics like a muscular build and predatory behavior. 8. Species Species is the most specific taxonomic category. It represents a group of individuals that share the highest level of physical similarity and can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. The scientific name of a species consists of two parts, the genus name followed by the species epithet. For example, Panthera lea refers to the species of lions, while Panthera tigris represents the species of tigers. Through taxonomy, Scientists can organize the vast diversity of living organisms into a hierarchical structure that reflects their evolutionary relationships and physical similarities. This systematic approach enables the classification, identification, and study of organisms, facilitating our understanding of biodiversity, evolutionary history, and ecological interactions. Taxonomic classification of a lion, exploring its place in the hierarchy. Let's take a closer look at the taxonomic classification of a lion, which provides valuable insights into its place in the hierarchy of living organisms. Through this classification system, we can understand how the lion is categorized based on its physical characteristics and evolutionary relationships. 1. Domain The lion belongs to the domain Eukarya, which encompasses all organisms with eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotes have a membrane-bound nucleus and other complex organelles within their cells. 2. Kingdom Within the domain Eukarya, the lion falls into the kingdom Animalia. This kingdom comprises multicellular organisms that are heterotrophic, obtain nutrients by consuming other organisms, and lack cell walls. 3. Phylum The lion is classified within the phylum Chordata. This phylum includes organisms with a notochord, a flexible rod-like structure that provides support and develops into the spinal cord in vertebrates. 4. Class Within the phylum Chordata, the lion belongs to the class Mammalia. Mammals are characterized by several key features, including the presence of mammary glands, the ability to regulate their body temperature internally, and the provision of parental care to their young. 5. Order the lion is classified within the order Carnivora. This order includes mammals with specialized adaptations for a carnivorous diet, such as sharp teeth, claws, and a digestive system suited for consuming meat. 6. Family Within the order Carnivora, the lion is a member of the family Felidae. This family comprises various species of large and small cats, including lions, tigers, leopards, and domestic cats. Felidae members share characteristics such as retractable claws, sharp teeth, and a highly specialized hunting behavior. 7. Genus and Species The lion's scientific name is Panthera leo. Panthera represents the genus, which includes other big cat species like tigers, leopards, and jaguars. Leo signifies the species, specifically referring to lions. 
By classifying the lion into these taxonomic groups, scientists can understand its evolutionary relationships with other organisms and gain insights into its unique characteristics and ecological role. This classification system allows researchers to compare the lion to other members of the Felidae family and identify shared physical traits and behavioral patterns. Overall, taxonomic classification enhances our understanding of the lion's place in the animal kingdom and contributes to the broader study of biodiversity and evolutionary biology. Domain, Eukarya Organisms with Nucleated Cells in the classification of living organisms, the domain represents the highest level of taxonomic classification. The domain eukarya comprises organisms whose cells possess a distinct nucleus enclosed within a membrane. Let's delve into the characteristics and significance of this domain in the world of life. 1. Definition of eukarya Eukarya refers to a vast group of organisms that share a common cellular structure characterized by the presence of a nucleus. These organisms are eukaryotes, which means their cells possess various membrane-bound organelles, including the nucleus, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and more. The nucleus contains the organism's genetic material, usually in the form of chromosomes. 2. Cellular complexity. One significant feature that sets eukaryotes apart from other domains, such as archaea and bacteria, is their cellular complexity. Eukaryotic cells exhibit a higher level of organization and compartmentalize an. The presence of various membrane-bound organelles allows for specialized functions to take place within different cellular compartments, enhancing the efficiency and complexity of cellular processes. 3. Diversity within Eukarya Eukarya encompasses an astonishing diversity of organisms, ranging from single-celled organisms like amoebas and paramecia to complex multicellular organisms such as plants, animals, fungi, and protists. This domain includes an array of species inhabiting diverse habitats, from the depths of oceans to the highest mountaintops. 4. Evolutionary Significance the emergence of eukaryotic cells marked a significant milestone in the evolution of life on Earth. Eukarya likely evolved from a symbiotic relationship between different types of prokaryotic cells, leading to the formation of more complex cells with specialized functions. This cellular complexity provided a foundation for the development of multicellular organisms and the subsequent diversification of life. 5. Impact on Ecosystems Eukaryotes, as an integral part of ecosystems, play essential roles in various ecological processes. They serve as primary producers, such as plants and algae, utilizing photosynthesis to convert sunlight into chemical energy. Eukaryotic organisms also function as consumers, decomposers, and vital contributors to nutrient cycling within ecosystems. By categorizing organisms within the domain eukarya, Scientists recognize the fundamental similarities in their cellular structure and organization. This classification allows for the exploration of shared evolutionary histories, the study of diverse species, and the understanding of the complex mechanisms that underlie eukaryotic life. The domain eukarya showcases the remarkable adaptability and diversity of life on our planet. Kingdom Animalia, multicellular organisms dependent on consuming other organisms for energy. In the realm of taxonomic classification, the kingdom Animalia represents a diverse group of multicellular organisms characterized by their ability to obtain energy by consuming other organisms. Let's delve into the defining characteristics and significance of this kingdom within the natural world. 1. Definition of Animalia the kingdom Animalia encompasses a vast range of organisms, including humans, insects, mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and countless others. All members of this kingdom share key characteristics that distinguish them from organisms in other kingdoms. Animalia is defined by its members' multicellularity, eukaryotic cellular structure, and their reliance on consuming other organisms as a source of energy. 2. Multicellularity one key feature that sets animals apart from other organisms is their multicellular nature. Animalia consists of complex organisms composed of multiple specialized cells that work together to carry out various functions. 
The multicellular structure allows for greater differentiation of tissues and organs, enabling animals to exhibit a wide range of specialized functions and capabilities. 3. Heterotrophic Nutrition Animals within the kingdom Animalia are heterotrophs, meaning they obtain their energy by consuming other organisms or organic matter. Unlike plants, which can synthesize their own energy through photosynthesis, animals lack the ability to convert sunlight into usable energy. Instead, they rely on consuming other organisms, either as herbivores, plant eaters, carnivores, meat eaters, omnivores, consumers of both plant and animal matter, or as detritivores, consumers of decaying organic material. 4. Evolutionary Adaptations Through evolution, animals have developed a remarkable array of adaptations that enable them to survive and thrive within their respective ecological niches. These adaptations encompass various physical, behavioral, and physiological traits that enhance their abilities to capture prey, evade predators, find mates, reproduce, and navigate their environments. 5. Ecological Significance The kingdom Animalia plays vital roles within ecosystems and has a profound impact on the balance and functioning of natural environments. Animals serve as key components of food chains and webs, occupying different trophic levels as both consumers and prey. They contribute to energy flow and nutrient cycling within ecosystems through their consumption and decomposition processes. Additionally, animals engage in various ecological interactions, such as pollination, seed dispersal, and symbiotic relationships, which are critical for the maintenance and sustainability of ecosystems. 6. Human Connection as humans, we are part of the kingdom Animalia, sharing a common ancestry with the vast diversity of animal species. Understanding the characteristics, behaviors, and ecological roles of animals within this kingdom is not only crucial for scientific study but also for recognizing our interconnectedness and shared responsibility for the well-being of animal populations and their habitats. The Kingdom Animalia showcases the incredible diversity and complexity of organisms that rely on consuming other organisms for energy. Through their evolutionary adaptations and ecological interactions, animals contribute to the intricate web of life on Earth, shaping ecosystems and influencing the sustainability of our planet. By studying Animalia, scientists deepen our understanding of biodiversity, evolutionary processes, and the ecological dynamics that govern life on Earth. Phylum, Chordata Animals with a Dorsal Nerve Cord Within the vast spectrum of animal diversity, the phylum Chordata holds significant importance, encompassing organisms characterized by the presence of a dorsal nerve cord. Let's explore the defining characteristics and significance of this phylum within the animal kingdom. 1. Definition of Chordata the phylum Chordata comprises a diverse group of animals, including humans, fish, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Members of this phylum share several key characteristics that distinguish them from other animal phyla. Notably, Chordata organisms possess a dorsal nerve cord, which runs along their backside, serving as a central channel for transmitting nerve impulses. 2. Presence of a dorsal nerve cord one of the defining features of chordata is the presence of a dorsal nerve cord. This nerve cord develops from a structure called the notochord, which is present in the early embryonic stages of chordate organisms. The dorsal nerve cord is protected by the bony or cartilaginous structures of the animal's back, providing support and stability. In vertebrates, including humans, the dorsal nerve cord develops into the spinal cord, a critical component of the central nervous system. 3. Notochord Development The notochord is a flexible rod-like structure that provides support to the developing embryo and plays a role in the development of the nervous system. In chordate embryos, the notochord is present at some stage, and it serves as a foundation for the formation of other key anatomical features. Although the notochord may be replaced by the spinal column in some adult chordates, it remains a crucial developmental feature. 4 broad diversity. The phylum chordata encompasses an impressive range of organisms, from simple invertebrates to highly complex vertebrates. This diversity includes fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. 
Each group within Chordata exhibits unique adaptations and characteristics, reflecting their evolutionary history and ecological roles. 5. Evolutionary Significance Chordata represents an evolutionary milestone in the animal kingdom. The presence of a dorsal nerve cord allowed for more coordinated and complex movements in these organisms, contributing to their success in diverse habitats. This evolutionary innovation paved the way for the development of advanced sensory systems, higher cognitive functions, and intricate control over bodily movements. 6. Human Connection As humans, we belong to the phylum chordata, sharing a common evolutionary lineage with other chordates. The presence of a well-developed dorsal nerve cord, including the spinal cord, is a defining characteristic of humans and other vertebrates. Understanding our place within Chordata provides insights into our evolutionary heritage and the shared characteristics we possess with other chordate organisms. The phylum Chordata highlights the significance of the dorsal nerve cord as a distinguishing feature of diverse animals. Through their evolutionary adaptations and complex nervous systems, chordates have achieved remarkable abilities, contributing to their survival, locomotion, and interaction with their environment. By studying chordata, scientists gain valuable insights into the evolutionary history, physiological functions, and ecological roles of these remarkable organisms. Class, mammalia, animals giving birth to live young and nourishing them with milk. Within the animal kingdom, the class mammalia holds significant importance, encompassing organisms that exhibit the remarkable traits of giving birth to live young and nourishing them with milk. Let's explore the defining characteristics and significance of this class within the animal kingdom. 1. Definition of Mammalia The class Mammalia includes a diverse group of animals, ranging from humans to dolphins, elephants to bats, and dogs to kangaroos. What sets mammals apart from other animal classes is their unique reproductive and feeding strategies. Mammals are characterized by giving birth to live young, as opposed to laying eggs, and providing nourishment to their offspring through the production of milk. 2. Live birth. One of the primary characteristics that define mammals is their ability to give birth to live young. Unlike reptiles, birds, or amphibians that lay eggs, mammals possess internal fertilization and carry their developing offspring within their bodies until birth. This adaptation allows for more parental care, protection, and closer interaction between parents and their offspring. 3. Lactation and Milk Production An exceptional trait of mammals is the ability to produce milk to nourish their offspring. Females possess specialized mammary glands that produce milk, a nutrient-rich fluid containing proteins, fats, sugars, vitamins, and minerals. Lactation plays a crucial role in the early development and growth of mammalian young, providing them with essential nutrients and immune factors. 4. Hair or Fur Another distinctive characteristic of mammals is the presence of hair or fur on their bodies. Hair serves multiple functions, including insulation, protection against environmental elements, sensory perception, and camouflage. The texture, color, and density of hair or fur vary across mammalian species, enabling adaptations to different habitats and environmental conditions. 5. Warm-blooded metabolism Mammals are endothermic, or warm-blooded, animals. This means that they maintain a relatively constant internal body temperature, independent of the ambient environment. Endothermy allows mammals to be active and thrive in a wide range of habitats, regardless of external temperature fluctuations. It also facilitates higher metabolic rates, providing energy for various physiological functions and complex behaviors. 6. Parental care. Mammals exhibit diverse forms of parental care, demonstrating a strong investment in the survival and well-being of their offspring. This care can include nursing, protection, teaching, and social interactions. Parental care among mammals often contributes to the development of social bonds, learning, and the transmission of behaviors across generations. 7. Ecological Significance Mammals occupy diverse ecological niches, playing critical roles in various ecosystems. They function as herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, pollinators, seed dispersers, prey, 
and predators, among other ecological roles. Mammals contribute to energy flow, nutrient cycling, seed dispersal, and the regulation of populations within ecosystems, impacting their overall structure and functioning. The class Mammalia showcases the remarkable adaptations and characteristics that have contributed to the success and diversity of mammals on Earth. The ability to give birth to live young and nourish them with milk has provided an evolutionary advantage, promoting parental care, survival, and the transmission of traits across generations. Understanding the features and significance of mammals enhances our appreciation for the complexity of the animal kingdom and our connection to these extraordinary creatures. Order, carnivora animals primarily adapted for a meat-based diet. Within the diverse class of mammals, the order carnivora occupies a prominent place, encompassing animals that are primarily adapted for a meat-based diet. Let's delve into the defining characteristics and significance of this order within the animal kingdom. 1. Definition of carnivora. The order carnivora consists of a wide range of mammals, including iconic predators like lions, tigers, wolves, and bears, as well as smaller carnivores like weasels, raccoons, and seals. The members of this order are recognized for their evolutionary adaptations that equip them for capturing, killing, and consuming other animals as their primary source of sustenance. 2. Adaptations for hunting and consumption. Carnivora species possess an array of anatomical, physiological, and behavioral adaptations that enable them to excel in capturing and consuming prey. These adaptations include sharp and often specialized teeth for tearing flesh, strong jaws for gripping and subduing prey, keen senses for detecting and tracking potential prey, and agile bodies for effective pursuit and capture. 3. Dentition and specialized teeth. One notable characteristic of carnivora is their dental adaptations suited for consuming meat. These adaptations include sharp and prominent canines for grasping and puncturing, as well as specialized carnassial teeth. Carnassial teeth are modified premolars and molars with sharp edges, which work together in a scissor-like motion to shear through flesh, facilitating efficient consumption of prey. 4. Dietary Flexibility Although carnivora is primarily associated with a meat-based diet, some members of the order display dietary flexibility. For instance, certain species within carnivora, known as omnivores, have adapted to include a wider range of food sources in their diet. This adaptation allows them to consume plant matter, fruits, insects, and even carrion, in addition to meat. 5. Ecological Roles Carnivora species play crucial ecological roles within their respective habitats. As apex predators, they regulate prey populations, contributing to the overall balance and stability of ecosystems. By controlling herbivore populations, carnivora helps maintain the health of plant communities and influences the distribution of other species within their habitats. 6. Conservation Significance Several species within the order carnivora face conservation challenges due to habitat loss, human-wildlife conflict, and poaching. Protecting and conserving these carnivores is crucial not only for preserving biodiversity but also for maintaining the integrity of ecosystems and promoting ecological balance. Research and conservation efforts are aimed at understanding the unique adaptations and ecological roles of carnivora species and implementing strategies to ensure their survival. The order carnivora showcases the remarkable adaptations and behaviors of animals primarily adapted for a meat-based diet. Their specialized dentition, hunting strategies, and ecological significance contribute to the intricate web of life in ecosystems. Understanding the characteristics and ecological roles of carnivora enhances our appreciation for their evolutionary success and the crucial role they play in shaping and maintaining the diversity and functioning of our natural world. Family, Felidae Exploring the Remarkable World of Cats Within the order carnivora, the family Felidae reigns supreme, encompassing a diverse array of fascinating feline species commonly known as cats. Let's embark on a captivating journey to unravel the defining characteristics and significance of this family within the animal kingdom. 1. Definition of Felidae the family Felidae comprises a remarkable group of carnivorous mammals renowned for their grace, agility, and predatory prowess. 
cats within Felidae exhibit a range of sizes and adaptations, from the stealthy and powerful lions and tigers to the agile and independent domestic cats. This family showcases the incredible diversity and evolutionary success of feline species. 2. Anatomical and behavioral traits. Felidae species possess numerous distinguishing features that contribute to their exceptional hunting abilities. They exhibit keen senses, including acute vision, acute hearing, and a well-developed sense of smell. Cats have retractable claws, which they can extend when needed for capturing prey or climbing trees. Their flexible bodies, muscular limbs, and sharp teeth enable them to swiftly and efficiently pursue and subdue their prey. 3. Global Distribution Felidae species are found across various habitats worldwide, from dense forests to arid grasslands, from mountainous regions to tropical rainforests. Their ability to adapt to diverse environments has contributed to their successful colonization of various ecosystems, highlighting their remarkable adaptability and versatility. 4. Social Behaviors Cats within the family Felidae exhibit a wide range of social behaviors, varying from solitary lifestyles to more social arrangements. While some species are primarily solitary, others form complex social structures, such as lion prides or cheetah coalitions. These social dynamics play significant roles in communication, cooperative hunting, territory defense, and the raising of offspring. 5. Conservation Challenges Several felidae species face conservation challenges due to habitat loss, poaching, and human-wildlife conflicts. The protection and conservation of these magnificent creatures are crucial for maintaining the integrity of ecosystems and preserving biodiversity. Efforts such as habitat conservation, anti-poaching measures, and community engagement are essential for ensuring the survival of felidae species. 6. Cultural Significance Felidae, particularly domestic cats, hold significant cultural significance throughout human history. They have been revered and admired for their beauty, grace, and enigmatic nature. Cats have been companions and working animals, symbolizing various qualities across different cultures, including independence, mystery, and protection. The family Felidae offers a captivating glimpse into the diverse world of cats. From the awe-inspiring big cats prowling the savanna to the beloved domestic felines curled up on our laps, these creatures inspire admiration and curiosity. Studying felidae deepens our understanding of their ecological roles, evolutionary adaptations, and the importance of conservation efforts to safeguard their future. Genus, Panthera unveiling the majestic big cats of the genus. Within the family felidae, the genus Panthera reigns as an iconic group, encompassing or inspiring big cats such as lions, tigers, and leopards. Let's embark on a captivating exploration into the world of Panthera, unraveling their defining characteristics, evolutionary adaptations, and ecological significance. 1. Defining Panthera The genus Panthera comprises a select group of powerful and majestic big cats known for their size, strength, and remarkable hunting abilities. These awe-inspiring creatures include lions, panthera leo, tigers, panthera tigris, leopards, panthera pardus, jaguars, panthera onca, and snow leopards, panthera uncia. Panthera species are highly revered and hold a special place in our collective fascination with the natural world. 2. Shared Physical Traits Members of the genus Panthera share several distinctive physical traits that set them apart from other felid species. These include a muscular build, sharp retractable claws, strong jaws equipped with sharp teeth, and an elongated body structure. These adaptations allow panthera cats to excel in capturing, subduing, and consuming their prey. 3. Geographic Distribution Panthera species exhibit diverse geographic distributions, occupying various habitats across the globe. For instance, lions are found in sub-Saharan Africa and a small population in Gur Forest, India. Tigers are native to Asian countries such as India, Russia, and Southeast Asia. Leopards are widely distributed across Africa and parts of Asia, including India and the Russian Far East. Each species has evolved to thrive in their specific ecosystems and environmental conditions. 
4. Hunting and feeding behaviors. Panthera cats are apex predators, renowned for their hunting prowess and dietary preferences. They possess remarkable adaptations, including keen senses, exceptional speed and agility, and a stealthy approach to stalking their prey. The diet of Panthera species primarily consists of ungulates, hoofed animals, such as deer, buffalo, and antelope. However, they display some degree of dietary flexibility and may also consume smaller mammals, birds, and even fish when opportunities arise. 5. Ecological Importance Panthera species play crucial roles in their respective ecosystems as top predators, exerting significant influences on prey populations and the overall balance of their habitats. They contribute to controlling herbivore populations, thereby influencing vegetation dynamics and the diversity of other species within their ecosystems. The presence of panthera cats is an essential component of healthy and functioning ecosystems. 6. Conservation Challenges Panthera species face numerous conservation challenges, primarily due to habitat loss, poaching, and human-wildlife conflicts. Several species within the genus, such as the Amur leopard and Sumatran tiger, are critically endangered. Conservation efforts focus on protecting their habitats, implementing anti-poaching measures, and promoting community engagement to mitigate conflicts and ensure the survival of these majestic big cats. The genus Panthera showcases the epitome of feline magnificence, housing some of the most revered and admired big cats on earth. Their physical prowess, hunting skills, and ecological significance captivate our imaginations and inspire conservation efforts. Understanding the characteristics and ecological roles of Panthera species deepens our appreciation for their evolutionary success and the urgent need to protect and preserve their existence for future generations. Species Panthera Leo Exploring the Iconic King of the Savannah Among the captivating members of the genus Panthera, the species Panthera Leo, commonly known as the lion, stands as a symbol of power and majesty. Let's embark on a fascinating journey into the world of Panthera Leo, unraveling its distinctive characteristics, social structure, ecological role, and cultural significance. 1. Definition of Panthera Leo Panthera leo, or the lion, represents one of the most recognizable and celebrated species within the animal kingdom. Lions are large, muscular big cats known for their impressive manes, robust physique, and remarkable hunting prowess. These iconic creatures have been deeply intertwined with human cultures throughout history, captivating our imagination and earning the title king of the savannah. 2. Physical Traits and Adaptations Lions possess several remarkable physical traits and adaptations that set them apart from other members of the Panthera genus. Male lions exhibit a majestic manner, which varies in color and size depending on the individual and environmental factors. Both males and females have muscular bodies, strong jaws equipped with sharp teeth, and powerful forelimbs, enabling them to tackle and bring down large prey. 3. Social Structure and Behavior one of the distinguishing features of lions is their social structure. They are the only truly social cats, living in groups called prides. A pride typically consists of related females, their offspring, and a few resident males. This cooperative living arrangement facilitates hunting, defense of territory, and rearing of young. Lions communicate through vocalizations, scent marking, and physical contact playing a vital role in maintaining social cohesion within the pride. 4. Ecological Role Lions play a crucial ecological role as apex predators, exerting significant influence on the ecosystems they inhabit. They primarily prey on large herbivores such as zebras, wildebeests, and buffalo, which helps regulate their populations and shape the balance of grazing pressure on vegetation. By controlling herbivore numbers, lions indirectly impact the diversity and structure of plant communities, influencing the overall health of the ecosystem. 5. Geographic Distribution Historically, lions had a broad distribution across Africa, parts of Europe, and Asia. However, due to habitat loss, human encroachment, and hunting, their range has significantly diminished. Today, the majority of wild lion populations are found in sub-Saharan Africa, 
with a small isolated population in the Gur forest of India. Conservation efforts aim to protect and preserve these remaining populations and their habitats. 6. Cultural Significance Lions hold profound cultural significance, being revered and celebrated in various human societies throughout history. They feature prominently in mythology, folklore, and religious symbolism, often representing strength, courage, and royalty. Lions have become iconic symbols of wildlife conservation and are widely associated with the preservation of biodiversity and the need to protect endangered species. The species Panthera leo, the lion, embodies the essence of power, beauty, and social complexity. Its physical prowess, majestic appearance, and cultural significance have captured our admiration and curiosity. Studying Panthera leo deepens our understanding of its role as an apex predator, its intricate social dynamics within prides, and the urgent need to conserve and protect this iconic species. The lion serves as a compelling reminder of the awe-inspiring diversity of life on Earth and the importance of our efforts to preserve it for future generations. Understanding organisms through taxonomic classification, exploring relationships, similarities, and evolutionary history. Taxonomic classification provides a framework for organizing and categorizing organisms based on their relationships, similarities, and evolutionary history. This classification system allows us to delve into the fascinating world of biodiversity and gain valuable insights into the interconnectedness of life on Earth. Let's delve into the significance of taxonomic classification and how it enhances our understanding of organisms. 1. Taxonomic Groups Taxonomic groups, or taxa, are hierarchical categories that organize organisms into increasingly specific groups. The main taxonomic groups, from broadest to most specific, include domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. By classifying organisms into these groups, we create a systematic structure that reflects their shared characteristics and evolutionary relationships. 2. Relationships and similarities. Taxonomic classification allows us to identify relationships and similarities among organisms. Organisms within the same taxonomic group share more similarities with each other than with organisms in different groups. For example, organisms in the same species share the highest degree of similarity, while those in the same genus share certain common traits and genetic relatedness. 3. Evolutionary history. Taxonomic classification provides insights into the evolutionary history of organisms. As we move from broader to more specific taxonomic groups, we trace the evolutionary lineage and the diversification of traits. For instance, organisms in the same family share a common ancestor more recent than those in the same order. This classification system helps us understand the patterns of descent and the evolutionary changes that have shaped the diversity of life. 4. Comparative biology. Taxonomic classification facilitates comparative biology, allowing scientists to study similarities and differences among organisms within and across taxa. By examining organisms within the same taxonomic group, researchers can explore shared characteristics, ecological adaptations, and evolutionary patterns. Comparative biology provides a deeper understanding of how organisms have evolved and adapted to their environments. 5. Conservation and Management Taxonomic classification plays a vital role in conservation and management efforts. By identifying and categorizing organisms, we can prioritize conservation actions based on their taxonomic group. Endangered species or those belonging to vulnerable taxonomic groups may receive heightened protection to preserve their genetic diversity and ecological roles. Taxonomic classification guides conservation strategies and informs decision-making regarding habitat preservation and species management. 6. Discovering new species. Taxonomic classification continually evolves as new species are discovered and described. The process of identifying and classifying new organisms contributes to our understanding of biodiversity and expands our knowledge of the natural world. Taxonomy acts as a roadmap for identifying and naming new species, unraveling their evolutionary relationships, and expanding our understanding of life's remarkable diversity. 
By classifying organisms into taxonomic groups, we unlock a wealth of information about their relationships, similarities, and evolutionary history. This classification system serves as a fundamental tool for biologists, allowing us to explore the interconnectedness of life and uncover the fascinating story of evolution. Understanding taxonomic classification enhances our appreciation for the complexity and beauty of the natural world, and it guides our efforts to conserve and protect the rich tapestry of life on Earth. Conducting a simple ecological study, employing effective collecting and sampling methods. Ecological studies provide valuable insights into the interactions between organisms and their environment. To carry out a successful ecological study, it is essential to employ appropriate collecting and sampling methods. These methods allow researchers to gather accurate and representative data, enabling a comprehensive understanding of the study area. Let's explore the significance of selecting suitable collecting and sampling methods for a simple ecological study. Selecting collecting methods Collecting methods involve the gathering of specimens or data to examine specific aspects of the study area. Depending on the research objectives and the organisms of interest, various collecting methods can be employed. Some common collecting methods include 1. Direct observation Direct observation involves visually observing and recording the presence, behavior, or interactions of organisms within the study area. This method is particularly useful for studying organisms that are easily observable, such as birds, mammals, or plants. 2. Trapping and capture. Trapping and capture methods are employed to collect organisms that are difficult to observe directly or have elusive behaviors. This can include setting up traps, such as pitfall traps for small invertebrates or live traps for mammals. Care should be taken to minimize stress and harm to the captured organisms. 3. Sampling techniques. Sampling techniques involve collecting representative samples of organisms or their habitats. This can include using nets or sieves to sample aquatic organisms, collecting soil samples, or employing quadrats to estimate plant abundance and distribution. Choosing sampling methods. Sampling methods determine how and where data is collected within the study area. These methods help ensure that data accurately represents the overall ecological patterns and processes. Some common sampling methods include 1. Random sampling. Random sampling involves selecting sample sites or individuals randomly within the study area. This method helps reduce bias and ensures that data is representative of the entire area under investigation. Random sampling is commonly used for vegetation studies, insect surveys, or habitat assessments. 2. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the study area into distinct subunits or strata based on specific criteria such as habitat type or vegetation cover. Samples are then collected within each stratum, ensuring representation of different ecological conditions within the study area. 3. Systematic sampling. Systematic sampling involves collecting samples or data at regular intervals or along a predetermined transect or line. This method is useful for studying patterns along a gradient or to estimate the abundance and distribution of organisms within the study area. 4. Point sampling. Point sampling involves selecting specific points within the study area and collecting data or samples at those points. This method is often used for vegetation studies, where data is collected at fixed points to assess species composition, abundance, or biomass. By carefully selecting appropriate collecting and sampling methods, researchers can gather reliable and meaningful data for their ecological study. These methods ensure that data is representative, minimize bias, and provide a comprehensive understanding of the ecological dynamics within the study area. Proper consideration of collecting and sampling methods is crucial for generating accurate conclusions and contributing to our knowledge of the natural world. Conducting a simple ecological study, unveiling organism-environment interactions through effective collecting and sampling methods. Ecological studies provide valuable insights into the intricate relationships between living organisms and their environment. To embark on a successful ecological study, Selecting appropriate collecting and sampling methods is crucial. 
These methods enable researchers to gather accurate and representative data, facilitating a comprehensive understanding of the study's focal area. Let's explore the significance of choosing the most suitable collecting and sampling methods for a simple ecological study. Choosing collecting methods. Collecting methods entail the acquisition of specimens or data to investigate specific aspects of the study area. The selection of appropriate collecting methods depends on the research objectives and the target organisms. Here are some common collecting methods employed in ecological studies. 1. Direct observation. Direct observation involves visually monitoring and documenting the presence, behavior, and interactions of organisms within the study area. This method is particularly useful for studying observable organisms, such as birds, mammals, or plants, and allows researchers to record valuable behavioral and ecological information. 2. Trapping and capture. Trapping and capture methods are employed to collect organisms that are challenging to observe directly due to their elusive behaviors or habitats. This can include setting up traps, such as pitfall traps for small invertebrates or camera traps for elusive mammals, to obtain data on their population densities, activity patterns, or species richness. 3. Sampling techniques. Sampling techniques involve collecting representative samples of organisms or their habitats to gain insights into population characteristics, species diversity, or community structure. This may include using nets or traps to sample aquatic organisms, collecting soil samples to assess microbial diversity, or using quadrats to estimate plant abundance and species composition. Selecting sampling methods. Sampling methods determine how and where data is collected within the study area, ensuring that the collected data accurately represents the ecological patterns and processes. Here are some commonly employed sampling methods in ecological studies. 1. Random sampling. Random sampling involves selecting sample sites or individuals randomly within the study area. This method helps minimize bias and ensures that data represents the entire study area. Random sampling is often employed in biodiversity assessments, habitat surveys, or population studies. 2. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the study area into distinct subunits or strata based on specific characteristics, such as habitat types or vegetation zones. Samples are then collected within each stratum, providing insights into variations within different ecological conditions and improving the accuracy of overall assessments. 3. Systematic sampling. Systematic sampling involves collecting samples or data at regular intervals or along a predetermined transect or line. This method is useful for studying patterns along environmental gradients, assessing changes in vegetation structure, or estimating population densities across a spatial scale. 4. Point sampling. Point sampling entails selecting specific points within the study area and collecting data or samples at those locations. This method is often employed in vegetation studies, where data is collected at fixed points to assess species composition, cover, or other structural attributes. By carefully considering and selecting appropriate collecting and sampling methods, researchers can gather reliable and insightful data for their ecological study. These methods ensure data accuracy, minimize biases, and contribute to a comprehensive understanding of organism-environment interactions. Thoughtful consideration of collecting and sampling methods enhances the validity and significance of ecological research, ultimately advancing our knowledge of the natural world. Choosing effective collecting and sampling methods for ecological studies. Collecting methods and sampling techniques are vital components of ecological studies, allowing researchers to obtain relevant data from organisms and their environment. These methods encompass a range of approaches, including observation, capture, and sample collection. Likewise, sampling methods involve strategic choices for gathering representative data within a study area. Let's delve into the intricacies of collecting methods and sampling techniques commonly employed in ecological studies. Collecting methods 1. Observation. Observing organisms in their natural habitats is a fundamental method used to gather information about their behavior, interactions, and ecological roles. 
Direct observation allows researchers to document and record specific observations without physically manipulating the organisms or their environment. 2. Capture and release. Capturing organisms provides an opportunity to closely examine and study them. This method involves capturing individuals using techniques such as traps, nets, or specialized equipment. Once captured, the organisms are carefully examined, measured, and documented before being released back into their natural habitat, minimizing any potential harm. 3. Sample collection. Collecting samples, such as plants, soil, water, or other environmental materials, is crucial for analyzing specific parameters within an ecosystem. Samples provide insights into plant community composition, nutrient content, microbial diversity, or chemical characteristics of the environment. These samples are typically collected using appropriate tools and equipment, ensuring representative and uncontaminated samples for analysis. Sampling methods 1. Random sampling. Random sampling involves selecting samples randomly from different areas within a habitat or study site. This approach ensures that each sample has an equal chance of being selected, reducing bias and providing a representative representation of the overall area. Random sampling is particularly useful when studying biodiversity, population densities, or assessing environmental variables across a broad spatial scale. 2. Systematic sampling. Systematic sampling involves collecting samples at predetermined intervals or locations within the study area. This method follows a consistent pattern, such as collecting samples along a transect line or at regular intervals within a habitat. Systematic sampling allows for the assessment of ecological patterns, changes along gradients, or the distribution of organisms or resources within the study area. 3. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the study area into distinct subunits or strata based on specific characteristics, such as habitat types, vegetation zones, or environmental conditions. Samples are then collected within each stratum, ensuring representation of the variability within different ecological units. Stratified sampling enables a more precise understanding of the ecological patterns and processes occurring within different habitat. Types By carefully selecting appropriate collecting methods and sampling techniques, researchers can gather reliable data that accurately represents the ecological dynamics of the study area. These methods ensure that the collected data is comprehensive, representative, and appropriate for addressing the research objectives. The selection of collecting methods and sampling techniques is integral to the success of ecological studies, contributing to a deeper understanding of the complex relationships between organisms and their environment. Studying insect population in a meadow, employing sweep nets for collection and analysis. When conducting research on the insect population within a meadow, employing sweep nets is a practical and effective method for collecting insects from the vegetation. This technique involves sweeping a net through the air, capturing insects in the process. Once collected, these insects can be carefully identified, counted, and subsequently released, providing valuable data for further analysis. Let's delve into the process and significance of using sweep nets for studying insect populations in meadows. 1. Sweep Net Collection Method The sweep net technique involves using a specialized net, typically with a long handle and a bag-shaped netting, to sweep through the vegetation within the meadow. As the net passes through the air, it intercepts and captures insects in its mesh, allowing for their subsequent examination. 2. Capturing Insects as the sweep net is moved through the air, it intercepts various insects, including flying insects, as well as those resting or foraging on the vegetation. The net's fine mesh prevents the escape of captured insects, enabling their safe retrieval for further analysis. 3. Identification and enumeration Once the insects are collected, careful identification and enumeration take place. Experts or researchers skilled in insect taxonomy and classification examine the captured insects to determine their species and record relevant data such as size, coloration, and other identifying features. This process aids in understanding the composition and diversity of the insect population within the meadow. 
4. Release of captured insects. After identification and data recording, the captured insects are released back into their natural habitat. It is crucial to handle the captured insects with care to minimize any potential harm and to ensure the preservation of the meadow's ecological balance. 5. Data analysis and interpretation. The data collected from the sweep net samples can be analyzed to determine various ecological parameters. The insect abundance, species richness, and composition can provide insights into the health and dynamics of the meadow ecosystem. Long-term monitoring using sweep nets can also help detect population trends, changes in species composition, or the impact of environmental factors on insect populations. 6. Significance of sweep net sampling. Sweep net sampling is a widely used method for studying insect populations in meadows and other habitats. It offers a practical and non-invasive approach to collect a representative sample of insects present in the study area. By employing sweep nets, researchers gain valuable information about the diversity, abundance, and community structure of insects, which are critical components of ecosystem functioning and biodiversity. The use of sweep nets to study insect populations in meadows provides valuable data for understanding the complex interactions between insects and their environment. This method allows researchers to examine the insect community's composition, assess their roles as pollinators, decomposers, or herbivores, and investigate their responses to ecological factors. The insights gained through sweep net sampling contribute to our broader understanding of the intricate web of life within meadows and aid in the development of effective conservation strategies for these vital ecosystems.